and it's really early in the morning for me for a lift. I usually don't lift this early, so it's about to be interesting. But I have that, I have sprints, and then we're gonna go to this coffee shop and do some work there. And my plan today is to kind of talk to you guys about competing and everything you need to know, like uh, hormones, mental state, physical state, things you need to buy, things you need to prepare for, all of that. So I don't really have a list. I might come up with a list, but I kind of just want to speak from the heart and let you know my experience and my experience with clients and all of that. So that's the plan today. And I may record my workout or I may do something else for you guys that you can use as well. So here we go. I'm feeling love sick. Whites, PB2, Truvia, cinnamon for a meal, and then I have ground turkey, potatoes, and asparagus from Bite Meals. I feel the magic in my veins. It's like I'm sipping a potion, only you can give to me. It burns me higher than a flame. We got our lunch bag with all of our food inside of it. Hopefully this coffee place has a microwave. Your boy awesome. don't like cold beef. My body's feeling kind of weak. Maybe I'm going crazy. No, it's not make believe this. All because, all because I'm mad, mad, mad about you. I'm mad, mad, mad about you. Okay, we have a 
double shot Americano with two um, squirts of sugar-free vanilla. And then I brought my own almond milk creamer. Call me crazy. And we brought our own sauce. <laughs> day here at the well coffee shop and I got a lot of work done like I was going hey so was steep but I was planning on recording there the topic that I talked about earlier but none of the conference rooms were open so I'm just gonna do a very chill talk either in the car or at home so stay tuned for that Hold out, it's like freaking 50 degrees in May. SOS, son, where you at? These are the bomb. If y'all want a zero calorie drink, boost your electrolytes, this bad boy. What I want to talk to you guys about today, like I said earlier, is my stance on competing. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go through physical, mental, what you need to buy, everything that you need to know. Um, I don't have a list or anything so I might skip over some things on accident because I'm not a very like listy type person sometimes. So I'm doing this on the fly. But here we go. First thing I want to talk about is mental health. I feel like there is a lot of people who want to do a competition because they hate the way their body looks and they want to do it because they think that competing is going to make them fall in love with themselves. Um, I would highly recommend not to do this because when you start to compete, you're going to pick at yourself even more. You're going to look at yourself in the mirror every single day because that's what you do when you compete and evaluate what needs to be improved. Um, so if you're not happy with your body right now, this is going to make it worse. Competing is going to make it worse. Uh, same thing goes with eating disorder. If you have any type of anorexia or uh, bulimia, I promise you that doing a competition isn't going to dissolve those things. Um, it can actually make it worse. I have just, I've seen this, I've known this, I've. I just have seen it so many times that someone who has an eating disorder and who is not mentally okay with the way they look or has a healthy relationship with food or working out, competing is a very, very, very extreme sport and you have to be in a positive mental headspace in order to do so. Um, so. If you have any type of eating disorder right now or any type of negative body issue, I would just highly recommend not to do a competition yet. I would focus on working on yourself, working on self-love, working on eating healthy because you love it, not because you want to look a certain way, working out because you love it, not because you want to look a certain way. I would highly recommend to make yourself well again so that you can go ahead and compete. Um, to be honest, I used to have an eating disorder myself, and this was back in high school. It lasted for about a year. I'll do my whole story again here on YouTube. You can check it out in a very long time video, like two years ago, but I do have it on YouTube. Uh, but I did have an eating disorder, and I knew that if I were to compete at that time, I would just be physically and mentally not okay to an extreme. So I took some time. I took, I took actually like five years to be okay and make sure that I am 100% fine, loving my body, loving myself, fine with eating, you know, the bad foods and fine with not being able to work out one day. Um, I took some time for myself and I think that if I didn't do that, I would be in a very, very, very bad place. Um, because competing is going to mess with you mentally if you're not ready for it. You need to be prepared. And the reason why I put mentality first is because I just think it is the sole center of 
this entire sport and it's the center of your life where your mental headspace is at is you know how you live your daily life make sure your mentality is in a good place you're in a positive place you will love yourself for you and just know that competing isn't going to make you love yourself anymore <laughs> it should be for wanting to see how far you can push your limits and see how far you can grow mentally in terms of you know taking that challenge and completing it to its fullest taking every single day and um, focusing on that day to be your best self that's what it should be about not because you want to look a certain way because it's going to leave you empty inside okay so number two physical a lot of people want to start a bikini competition right now and that's how I was too um, what they don't know is if they don't have their calories or their metabolism running at an optimal level as well as that lean mass base dieting down is going to be very very bad for you um, and it's going to be hard on your body um, and you're not going to see the results that you could if your metabolism was a little bit higher your calories were higher and you had a little bit more of a mean a lean muscle mass base um, so I would take actually maybe even just a year to work on getting your calories up your metabolism up work on working on growing that lean mass and then you'll be at a perfect point to start dieting down from up here rather than starting dieting down from down here um, that will give you a much better result it will make you just healthier in general um, because you won't have to push as hard normally that's the case um, so that's what I recommend you to do physically find your why on why you want to compete um, and make sure that it isn't going to um, put you in a worse place than you were before make sure that it's something that's going to bring something positive out of you instead of bring something negative out of you uh, the next thing I want you guys to be aware of is it's going to be a very uh, rigorous schedule. It's going to be a very, very high priority in your life if you do want to do well and give your best. Um, so I would just be aware of the relationships in your life. So I think your first competition, I think a lot of people go through this, uh, they tend to not know the end result and they're very very stressed out about it about doing well and doing this 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 at this exact time at this exact way um but just know that if you have to like get angry at your significant other if you have to stop talking to friends because you have such a focus on this goal and if you have to hermit yourself in your house for you know four months and not do a thing because you have this specific goal just know that there is there is a different way to do things and you can balance it and it's going to be a little bit of a juggling act and it's going to be a little hard it will take some time to learn but you can balance friends family all of that um, to an extent I mean you will become a hermit a little bit because you might be a little bit more tired than usual. Um, but don't not do something because you're on prep. Uh, I think maybe my first competition, I was so rigorous to the point where like my goal was here and that, and I just had tunnel vision. So if I like strayed from my plan a tiny bit in terms of timing of my meals or having this at dinner time um, I would get very like stressed out and anxious and my mood was just so Ugh, all the time like who would want to be around that I sure want to wouldn't want to be around me um, so I just want to make you guys aware that you need to make sure that your relationships don't suffer from competing because you will regret it in the end um, it is a very selfish sport, but if you can learn to balance life in general with the sport, um, then you'll be successful in other areas too, rather than just competing. Uh, let's see. I think... Oh. Okay. A 
coach. So there's so many bad coaching out there and I'm just gonna flat out say it, so bad. I still have people coming to me almost every day and it's a horror story. I mean, these poor girls are being starved to death and being two hours of cardio a day and doing this for months on end and then having to go from there after your competition, okay, then what? Then what happens? Your metabolism is shot, your, you, your body is shot, you hate the sport probably because it's just like the worst experience of your life because you just hated life during it. There's just so many bad coaching out there. So I would recommend, highly recommend, researching your coach, talking to people, talking to that coach's clients, um, seeing how they do things, uh, whether you like doing a meal plan or flexible dieting or um, all of that, I would just highly recommend researching um, a good a good coach. You can do this sport on your own. Uh, I did it for spokesmodel, bodybuilding.com spokesmodel competition on my own, and I did very well with it, but it's very, very hard to look at yourself every single day and see the changes. Um, it's also very stressful. So I love having a coach. I love it because he's obviously very, very knowledgeable about this sport and he can look at my body every single day and know what has changed, what needs to be changed, what needs to stay the same. Um, he helps me not stress out about myself so I can worry about my clients rather than myself. Um, he also helps me not go balls to the wall with everything because I'm someone who will just do whatever it takes to get to that end goal, but I like don't chill when I need to chill. So having someone tell me, yo, you need a refeed today and you need to not do cardio, that's so helpful to me because I personally would not do that for myself because it's really hard to like push the brakes and know that it's gonna be okay so that's why I like having a coach highly recommend you guys research one it can be done like I've seen so many girls do competitions on their own I just think at the level like the national level um, it might be good to look into having a coach just because it's way less stressful too on yourself um costs okay so if you're not sponsored and have sponsors pay for your competitions and suits and everything it's gonna be very expensive okay my first competition let's see I paid six hundred dollars for a suit you pay 150 for your NPC card you pay 120 for your tan on show day um, it's like up to $300 to do two classes in a show, which is what I always did, novice and open. Um, and then when you get to the national level, it's a little more expensive. Um, let's see, heels, they can range from like 50 to $80. Um, waxing, ladies, yes, very expensive. Um, and also, literally kill me now um let's see hair and makeup i'm thankful that my sister is a whiz at that stuff so and i like love the way she does makeup obviously so she's done my hair and makeup i would um highly recommend researching who do who does the hair and makeup at your show um don't just jump in and pay the makeup artist you should definitely research their work or hire an outside makeup artist uh, let's see here. Coach. Um, it depends. I mean, some people pay $100 a month. Some people pay $800 a month, um, which is stupid. Don't do that. Um, but coaching is expensive, obviously. Gym membership. Traveling takes to get there. If you're flying, that's one thing. Hotel. Um, jewelry. That's, you know, that can range to like $50 to $70. Um, let me think. 
highly recommend doing a show that is near you the first time because it's just gonna be so much easier to sleep in your own bed and not have to worry about traveling to the hotel and worry about heating up your meals in the microwave downstairs. Um, it's just so much easier, especially for your first show. Like, I would so recommend doing it where you can sleep at home and have all your stuff at home. Um, that's what Steve's doing this time around. He's going to South Bend, which is like two hours away. Uh, so it'll be nice if he can sleep here the night before and oh, I wish that I had that luxury. Um, let me think. Posing lessons. Uh, I personally charge $40 per session, hour. Uh, but it depends. I mean, people can range. Kenny Wallach, I think I paid him like $130 a first single session, maybe $150. Um, let me think. Your food. Duh. I forgot about that. You're gonna want to eat a lot of nutrient-dense foods when you're cutting uh, for various various reasons uh, Digestion performance keep you full get your vitamins in your um, All of that just oh, I, I for sure keep it nutrient-dense because I just know the way my body functions on a lot of processed foods and um, Let's just keep it at that because I talk about that all the time uh, So foods gonna be very expensive obviously. So, you know, to add it all up, competing is going to be a lot of money. Uh, probably about, I would say, three to four grand, just to be safe. So, for your first competition, three to four grand, to the max. But I would definitely start saving if, you, if this is something you want to do. Competing is so fun, and going up on that stage is like just you'll get this feeling that you accomplish something amazing in your life and you get to show the world your hard work and what sticking to a goal can do for someone i just i love it it's very very fun to me if it ever becomes not fun i won't do it anymore but right now in my life it is something i i really enjoy i think it's very fun to see my body change go through mental challenges take every single day and try to bring my best self I think that overall it helps me grow in a lot of ways uh, the physical outcome is cool I mean I personally don't like the way I look when I'm like too too tiny I don't think that I ever like want to look that way on a daily basis like no um, but I think it's cool to like see how far we can go um, yeah, I mean, I think that if you guys have an itch for it, definitely research it. Make sure it's something you want to do because you want to make sure that you're in a place in your life that you can commit entirely to this uh, because why do it if you're just going to half-ass it? Like, you want to do it if you can bring your all and bring your best to that stage because you're gonna know when you get there you did everything in your power to bring your best and that is such a good feeling such an accomplishment so i think that i hit all the tips that i wanted to do hope you guys enjoyed this video i have not made something like this i don't think ever so let me know if you liked it uh also let me know what you want to see in the future shred videos I think as we get closer to the show, I start to get a little bit more like hardcore and I think those videos turn out really, really cool. But let me know what you want to see in the future. But again, thank you for watching. I love you guys and have a beautiful day.